Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Cloud Gaming Report. I'm Zach and this week we actually have quite a bit of news. I actually skipped the previous week's episode simply because there wasn't a lot going on in the world of cloud gaming and it seems like they waited to this week to announce and release a bunch of news related to cloud gaming. So we will have a pretty good episode this week with quite a bit of content. Uh, pretty much the only thing that happened the week before was some new games added to the GeForce Now platform. So I just kind of aggregated all that together. So this week's GeForce Now game uh, library update will have an aggregation of the last two weeks. So let's go ahead and kick off with that, get the most simplest topic done first, and then we'll dive into our juicy uh, topics later here in a second. So let's go ahead and talk about those games. In the last two weeks, they have added Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Planet Alpha, Chrono Trigger, Unknown Fate, Immortal Unchained, NASCAR Heat 3, Five Night at Freddy's 2. NBA 2K19, Assetto Corsa Competizone, uh, Boundless, Insurgency Sandstorm, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Private Beta, and Dying Light Bad Blood. So quite a few games have been added to the platform in the last two weeks. This is always good to see, and hopefully that means your, your newest game that you're in love with, that you want to play, is going to be available on day one. Uh, they have been very good about getting new games supported, at least big games. And as you can see, there are even smaller games always added to the list on an ongoing basis, which is great news and great to continue to see new games and GeForce Now continue to test uh, these games. Uh, hopefully that means you won't have any issues related to cloud gaming with those games. Of course, there could still be bugs, but it won't be directly related to cloud gaming, hopefully. So with that being said, we do have a couple more topics on GeForce Now. Uh, one of the topics is actually on the Shield, but it's how Shield and the GeForce Now platform interact. So there is now a companion app for the Shield ecosystem. Uh, this is available both on Android and iOS, and this adds a virtual mouse and a, a virtual keyboard. The virtual keyboard I could see being insanely uh, beneficial having to enter passwords in my Xbox, for instance, is always annoying when I have to sign into Netflix uh, or Amazon or something so I can watch videos on my Xbox, that's always frustrating. You're even just signing into my Xbox Live account because you have a joystick and you have to go through and go navigate the keyboard with the joystick. And in the time I can type like five letters, I could type, you know, two sentences on my phone or a whole paragraph on my keyboard, uh, you know, with a physical keyboard for like a computer. Uh, of course, that is a little bit of exaggeration, but it is very slow and frustrating, especially if you are security minded and have like random passwords of a fairly decent length. Uh, it just takes a while to enter these passwords and it's always frustrating. So having a virtual keyboard where you can just use your thumbs and quickly type out a password that is going to be invaluable in my opinion. It's not something you're going to be using all the time probably, but when you need it, it's going to be great to have. I actually, in the previous generation of Xbox, I actually got the chat pad uh, for the 360 just for the case of when I had to enter passwords. Like when friends would come over and we'd all sign an Xbox Live to play split screen Halo, being able to have the chat pad to quickly sign into your account. That is super amazing. So you just had one of those lying around and when you needed to sign into something, you just had a chat pad. So it's kind of similar to that. It's the modern version of that uh, and it's great news to have. I actually should check to see if they have that for the Xbox One. Uh, that'd be very great if Microsoft did something like that. But anyways, I digress. I'm getting completely off topic of cloud gaming. So let's get back on topic and we're gonna have in-game mic support for the Shield when using GeForce Now. So we have this on the PC, this is very cool to have, simply because this is one of the things that is kind of lacking in cloud gaming in certain instances where you don't have all your local hardware available on the cloud. And as we continue to evolve cloud gaming and becomes something that's gonna be more prime for mainstream, this is gonna be one of the final steps really involved to making cloud gaming mainstream is having all your local devices, all your local accessories, being able to work seamlessly on the cloud without any tinkering or any, you know, uh, anything on the user side where USB, essentially USB pass through and mics and things like that just work on the cloud without any tinkering. So that is something that is sometimes an issue. Uh, Shadow is working on USB pass through, for instance. Uh, so having all your devices that are locally is going to be very valuable in the cloud. And it's something I think will happen once cloud gaming becomes mainstream. We're not going to be spending $1,000 or more on a uh, gaming desktop. So maybe people might spend a little bit more on accessories, get a little bit nicer mouse, a little bit nicer keyboard possibly. 
upgrade their monitor for some instance. Something along those lines simply because they're not spending as much on the tower anymore, they might be able to spend more on the accessories and having all those accessories work seamlessly in the cloud is definitely going to be something that's going to be vital for cloud gaming to truly work and be truly mainstream. And the final update for the Shield ecosystem is they have approved mouse and keyboard support with the Shield TV. Finally, there are some more, there is another topic on GeForce Now, and that is relating to GeForce Now and 5G. So 5G has been something I've been talking about a lot. There are a lot of promises by the people behind 5G, Verizon, AT&T, and so forth. Uh, but we haven't got a lot of cold hard data simply because real people out there in the world I mean, like people that are testers, uh, besides people that are actually promoting the technology, uh, haven't had a chance to do real world testing to see actually how it performs simply because it's not available yet to consumers. But cloud gaming companies have been given access. We have had talked in the past, we have talked in the past about Verizon and Liquid Sky teaming up to do 5G. Uh, and now we have news on at t and NVIDIA teaming up to do 5G with GeForce Now and do some testing there. Uh, so it definitely does look like cloud gaming might be something that the broadband providers, such as at t Verizon, and so on and so forth, are going to use to promote the new 5G networks when it's, once it is widely available. So at t had a Spark conference uh, last week, I think, uh, but I just got the news of it just recently, but they had a Spark conference and the video was there showing off the GeForce Now platform playing on their 5G test network. Very interesting news there. I have done some testing. I actually have a video coming out here in the near future. I just got to record it, edit it, <laughs> and publish it. Uh, but I have done the pre preliminary testing, all the background work for you guys. Uh, so if you are listening to the podcast, definitely do head over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Uh, to stay tuned for that video in the future. It's going to be very interesting. I have done testing. Of course, it is a least small sample size, but I have done testing on the latency involved with different broadband connection types, such as 4G, uh, DSL, uh, fiber, and cable. So I've done testing. Uh, of course, once again, it is a small sample size, but I believe my Verizon was around 50 to 60, I think, on average in terms of latency. Uh, so in comparison, like the G the Google Fiber was much lower. Google Fiber, the fiber to your house uh, or business in that case, uh, is much faster, much a much lower latency, which is going to be one of the key factors in terms of cloud gaming. It's not only the speed of your connection, but also the latency involved. So I have done some testing with cloud gaming and 4G, and it's been a pretty good experience. It seems like the speed is pretty much there. Faster speeds from 5G will definitely benefit, but the biggest thing is going to be the uh, theoretical much lower latency. They, that's one of the things that I have, actually have been championing uh, with 5G. When they're talking about it, it's going to be much lower latency. So it's not only faster, but it's also much lower latency. So in their initial testing, NVIDIA is getting 16 millisecond uh, flag on the 5G networks. Uh, that's much better than I was getting in my testing on 4G. Now, whether we actually experience that in real world once 5G rolls out is going to be another question. It'll be definitely be very interesting to see. But where things get really interesting is when NVIDIA, when NVIDIA started talking about the future. They are expecting to lower this down to a potentially 3 milliseconds, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. And then they go on and move from there and talk about how this could enable cloud gaming via VR. So if they are able to pull this off and get VR fully enabled in the cloud, this will be massive, simply because if you're gonna have high fidelity VR, it requires a ton of computational power. That's one of the downsides of VR because you want high frame rates, but you also have, if you're gonna try even try to do cloud gaming and VR together, you also have to have a very low latency because not only do you have to have that high frame rate, but you also have, that, have to have that latency involved to actually send the data up to the cloud server and get that back in quick enough manner to actually update your headset fast enough so that you can get your tracking data accurately. Otherwise, if your real world and your virtual world have a disconnect, that causes sickness. And a lot of people agree that 90 frames per second is the sweet spot, which translates roughly to uh, 11 frames per second uh, or 11 milliseconds of latency, I think. Uh, just simply divide 1,000 by 90, it should be somewhere around 11. 
So we need to have 11 milliseconds of latency and you have to divide that by two. So essentially you need five milliseconds of latency because you always, or 5.5, whatever, I digress. We're not doing a math podcast here today. Um, so with that being said, you need to have five milliseconds because the data has to get up to the cloud server and back down to the cloud server. And that's actually not giving any time at all for the uh, encoding and the decoding of the video signal. So you have to give a little bit of headroom there too, even though they have done a lot of work in pretty much minimalizing that down to a very small amount. So with all that being said, if they are able to achieve a three millisecond latency uh, connection, that could definitely enable cloud gaming. Josh over at Flickstick has done some prelim preliminary testing. You have to jump through some hoops and latency is still gonna be an issue. Uh, I definitely am very interested in doing my video. I just need to record it. Uh, finding time is always a challenge, but I definitely highly recommend you checking that video out because it's going to be very interesting looking at the latency of different connections. And this is going to be something that is going to be vital going forward uh, because it's not only going to be the data rate, but you also have to very closely look at your latency of your connection to the cloud gaming server. So with all that being said, there's a lot of cool things in the pipeline with NVIDIA and GeForce Now, and I'm be very interested to finally get my hands on 5G and see if it's anywhere close to how the level that is being promoted. So finally, our final topic is the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, this is gonna be available on the Switch via cloud gaming. Uh, so we actually have a, had a topic, or a topic a couple months ago about the uh, Resident Evil 7 that is going to be available on the Switch. Uh, this is very similar. This is only going to be available in Japan and it's going to be available via cloud gaming. Uh, so very similar setup there. They didn't talk about, or I didn't at least see uh, how they're doing pricing. Like the Resident Evil 7 model was like a rental for like six months, which is plenty of time to beat the game in most cases, unless you're me and you don't game a ton and then you get like 70% in the game and then something new comes along and you get distracted. Uh, but anyways, I digress. I just showed off uh, my <laughs> distraction ability there. Um, but anyways, this is uh, definitely cool news because it's available or it's making available games on the Switch that wouldn't normally be, a, be available. And that's something that cloud gaming is going to be amazing for. It's going to be making high-end games available on devices that don't have the power locally to, to be able to do that. Of course, it does have downsides where you have to have a fast internet connection, have a low latency internet connection. Uh, but for certain games, like games like Assassin's Creed, uh, I haven't played it for a couple of years, but it's an action game. Uh, and I play like Tomb Raider more recently. And games like that play very well on um, cloud gaming because a lot of times they're designed for consoles, which normally with the TV, and this is getting very technical, but TVs inherently have more latency involved in displaying signal than the computer monitor. Uh, and normally uh, consoles have con uh, controllers, which kind of allow you to adapt to that better. Uh, long story short, TVs inherently, due to the way they process the video, do add some latency to your uh, video signal. So you kind of already have a little bit of inherent, inherent latency there. So having Cloud gaming coming to a play isn't too big of a deal there, especially if you're using a computer monitor and don't have the added display from the TV. Uh, this is something that there are tons of videos out there on the YouTube, so if you want to follow that a little bit deeper and go through that uh, tunnel of information, uh, there's definitely a lot of resources available on that. But anyways, these types of action games are very playable on cloud gaming simply because latency doesn't become too big of a factor and I don't know if Assassin's Creed ever added a multiplayer aspect. I don't imagine, I can't imagine how they would incorporate that. Um, but in the single player games, latency is less of an impactor because you're not facing against other people online too. So with all that being said, cool news uh, that more games are gonna be available on the Switch that wouldn't otherwise be playable, or if they did get ported over, they would be limited in some factor or another uh, in terms of graphical fidelity. So I think that's the last topic for today's episode. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, as always, like, heart, subscribe, follow, whatever the action is on the podcast app that you're listening or on YouTube, of course. Uh, thanks, guys. And as always, until next time, Zach out.